Hi guys. It is a uh, <clears throat> spectacularly gorgeous, peaceful Saturday morning here in paradise outside of Inverness, Florida, as my uh, as my neighbor uh, gets his four thousand eight hundred dollars worth of impact fees taking advantage of uh, here sawing down a cypress swamp while I am uh, chronicling the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this beautiful Saturday morning January 25th 2020 and this is Sam Mitchell and you have stumbled into Collapse Chronicles where I am genuinely uh, genuinely chronicling the collapse of a of a delicate wetland ecosystem in central Florida today <clears throat> but uh, while that's going on in the background while Gideon's trumpet is going on in the background uh, here in paradise uh, <laughs> I want to thank our new lieutenant here from Singapore, Sarah Lim, for sending me this article from Scientific American. Uh, and this interview I had with her, you know, she was talking about a, a, I guess a lecture that she went to by this mad scientist, David Keith, at Harvard as they are starting to test out solar radiation management by figuring out what kind of chemicals to go spewing into the stratosphere and how best to deliver them to the stratosphere and whatnot here at uh, the uh, opening bell of 2020. I have been predicting, I don't mind patting myself on the back, for years, even when I was a chemtrail wacko, I, I actually used to be a chemtrail wacko, that uh, if these things were not real 10 years ago, I was predicting 10 years ago that around 2020, you would see these things come on board. This is a slam dunk. Uh, Al Gore in his book, The Future, which I think, when, when did Al Gore write The Future? 10 or 12 years ago, was talking about how solar radiation management, uh, and let's call them what they are, chemtrails, will be a reality in the 21st century as uh, humanity uh, rushes headlong uh, into perhaps the single biggest tinkering with the planet. Geoengineering. What could go wrong? You, you know, th this, th this whole debate about geoengineering is, uh, is probably the single biggest example of frying pan versus the fire. Uh, damned if we do, damned if we don't. Uh, it's just, it, th th this is the most ironic example of a, a, a bunch of rats scurrying around on a sinking ship. If we don't geoengineer the planet, uh, we're going to fry. If we do geoengineer the planet, there's no telling what's going to happen, but we will find out soon enough, because here we go, from Scientific American, NOAA, you know, which is uh, the National Oceanic Atmosphere Administration, uh, it's the federal <coughs> office, NOAA gets go-ahead to study, to study controversial climate plan B. Government climate scientists will study two geoengineering pro proposals to counter global warming. There we go. Imagine this. Uh, they have this this is 
scientific American photo of these, quote, chemtrails uh, taken back in 2009. Uh, oh, this is actually chemtrails caused from ships. Wow. I, did you realize that, uh, that this is not airplanes, guys? This is ships. Uh, chemtrails from ships. And as there's YouTube videos on for the chemtrail wackos, you, you know, cars uh, can cause chemtrails under the, under the right conditions, under the right temperature. Anyway, enough about chemtrails. Let's uh, get into, find out what the latest from the mad scientist is. <clears throat> The top climate change scientist, the top climate change scientist for NOAA said he has received $4 million from Congress. Otherwise, uh, meaning he has received $4 million from American taxpayers and permission from his agency, meaning a federal agency, to study two emergency and controversial methods to cool the earth if, if the U.S. and other nations fail to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. There is no if about it uh, at this point. We know damn well we are not going to reduce uh, emissions. And even if we were to stop emissions right now from humans, so we have, we have already unleashed all of these uh, feedback loops where the CO2 levels would keep uh, would keep rising. So we already have found one of the uh, these big lies here in scientific American. We all know damn well there is no if about it. This is David Fahey. David Fahey, director of the Chemical Science Division of NOAA's Earth System Research Laboratory. How about that for a scary title? The Chemical Sciences Division of NOAA's Earth System Research Laboratory. There, there is no, uh, I uh, can't imagine what could go wrong in the middle of that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, told his staff yesterday that the federal government, meaning the Donald Trump government, I guess, is ready to examine the science behind geoengineering or what he dubbed a plan B for climate change. Hmm. Fahey said he has received backing to explore two approaches. <clears throat> One, and the one we're all talking about, one is to inject sulfur dioxide or a similar aerosol into the stratosphere to help shade the earth from more intense sunlight. Huh. It is patterned after a natural solution, volcanic eruptions, which have been found to cool the earth by emitting huge clouds of sulfur dioxide. The second approach would use an aerosol of sea salt particles to improve the ability of low-lying clouds over the ocean to act as shade. This technique is borrowed from ship tracks, which we just saw a picture of, or long clouds left by the passage of ocean freighters that are seen by satellites as reflective pathways, they could be widened by injections of vapor from seawater by specialized ships to create shading effects. Research in both these techniques, Fahey emphasized, 
are recommended are recommended in a forthcoming study by the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine titled, quote, Climate Intervention Strategies that Reflect Sunlight to Cool Earth. But in a sign of how controversial this topic is, Fahey recommended changing the, no the nomenclature from geoengineering to, quote, climate intervention, huh? which he described as a, quote, more neutral word. Actually, that's two words. I guess Dr. Fahey cannot count to two. Uh, and don't forget chemtrails. You can put it in one word, and then there is a way to put it into four words, but I have to remember what channel I am on. I think we all know the four words. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. Fahey also emphasized that this is not an approval to move forward with geoengineering. This is not an approval to move forward with geoengineering. Yes, uh, and Sancho Panza is a pit bull. Rather, this is to prepare the U.S. government for a political decision if the world fails to adequately limit the rise of global warming. Can, do we see a few overtones of 1984 in this article? I think this article was written by the Ministry of Truth. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay, getting back to this liar. Quote, Geoengineering is this tangled ball of issues, and science is only one of them. One of the things I am interested in doing is let's separate the science out, close quote. The idea is to give policymakers a clear view of how a hurry-up bid to save the planet would work. <laughs> a hurry-up bid to save the planet. The, guys, this is not the onion. This is Scientific American in the uh, in early 2020. Even then, the results likely would not be immediate. Fahey showed slides and graphics that noted that a plan B, a plan B to save the planet, might take until the next century to complete the cooling. Still, better science might, quote, buy time, buy time to improve the efforts, he said. Now, of course, we get to the, uh, the inconvenient truth here. There would be drawbacks, Fahey noted, after being asked by a researcher whether injections of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere might reduce seafood by acidifying the oceans. Uh, quote, this is uh, physicist Fahey's response to the question, will we acidify the oceans by uh, dumping sulfur dioxide into the air. Quote, When you put aerosols up into the atmosphere, it does a lot of things. That opens up this whole menu of things that you would have to worry about. Close quote. Yes. He said other aerosols, you know, other than sulfur dioxide, such as calcite or titania. Oh boy, here's a new one. Titania, quote, 
might have less impact, but nobody knows. Huh, we want to look at them in the laboratory. Yes, several smaller nations have complained that the use of aircraft to inject aerosols into the atmosphere might alter the weather or destroy the ozone layer, which protects humans from some of the more harmful radiation from sunlight. Fahey suggested that a scientific approach would require solving a list of unknowns. Yes, it is those unknown unknowns uh, that will bite you in the ass every time. Uh, yes, require solving a list of unknowns, including tests to find out what is in the stratosphere today and how to get aerosols to spread there homogeneously. Another likely area of research, unintended consequences. Yes, quote, we have to use atmospheric observations to find out what we are doing. Yes, at the moment, our government has no planned experiments. I, I could swear that Sarah was just uh, reporting <clears throat> from a few days ago that David Keith from Harvard what was uh, over there in Singapore talking about these new experiments. <coughs> now, maybe that's just Harvard University and not the government. At the moment, our government has no planned experiments, and NOAA's authority does not extend into the stratosphere. But there is a bill now in Congress called the, quote, Climate Intervention Research Act. Yes, that would broaden its jurisdiction. Quote, there could be more than $100 million attached to this, I'm told. Mm -hmm. Until now, neither Congress nor the administration, meaning the Trump administration, has ventured to tackle the Plan B issue. The closest thing, oh, here we go. All right. The closest thing to testing it is a Harvard University sponsored project called the, quote, Stratospheric Controlled Perturbation Experiment. That's what Sarah was, I love it. Controlled Perturbation. Yes, uh, if <laughs> Stratospheric Controlled perturbation experiment. What could go wrong with that one as the mad scientists are unleashed? This, uh, what Sarah was talking about last week, proposes a small scale test using a propeller driven balloon. It would ascend to a height of 12 miles over New Mexico and release less than 2.2 pounds of calcium carbonate. Hmm. The idea here is to create a tubular area in the sky about six tenths of a mile long and 100 yards in diameter through which the sensor packed balloon could slowly move back and forth, mixing the air and monitoring the solar reflecting abilities of the scattered materials. It also would track the impact of the treated area on the surrounding atmosphere. Yes, when this experiment would happen remains unknown. 
Harvard, sensitive to the question of how to govern such experiments, has appointed an outside advisory committee to help oversee and evaluate the test. According to David Keith, a Harvard physicist who is one of the leaders of the project, the outside committee would help determine if and when the experiment should move forward. Uh, funding for that experiment will come from Harvard Research Funds uh, and a list of outside contributors. Uh, huh. I'm just, uh, th this is getting stranger by the moment. Uh, Keith could not be reached for comment, but Fahey said NOAA supports the Harvard stratospheric test. Uh, I bet. Uh, quote, how about this uh, for a quote from a mad scientist? We are going to have to give up some things to go into plan B. That is why we would be motivated to try designer aerosols, but we may not have time. That's what Harvard wants to do. It goes back to the question of which path you want to be on, he added, noting the difference between a possible international decision to reduce greenhouse gas emissions or being late and forced to implement a plan B to stop runaway climate change. Quote, I don't want to be on the late path, but the question is, which paths are going to be open to us? <clears throat> I think nobody can play out all the chess moves on this issue. It is so complicated. Yes. Uh, the question is, which paths are going to be open to us. Well, we have two paths, people. We have the frying pan path, and we have the fire path. Uh, there you go. Pick your poison. It makes no difference at this point. Frying pan or the fire it is our choice here in the 21st century. Anyway, if uh, you enjoyed this inconvenient truth from Scientific American, please spend a few seconds to thumb up this video if you did not like uh, to hear about the two paths available to us. You can thumb it down and by all means, please subscribe to Collapse Chronicles while you are over here, but I've got to wrap up today's Chronicle of the Collapse and uh, pull up stakes and I'm moving over to my new waterfront lot. I am trying uh, to buy here in Florida to hide from the uh, collapse of a planet in the 21st century by buying a waterfront lot in Florida. You can tell what path I am on. Bye guys.